Good day, and welcome to my EDSE 307 mini lecture. Today, we are going to be discussing a topic that I love, poetry. We are going to be engaging with poetry only briefly and focusing primarily on one of the most well-known styles. Before we get into it, I want us to take a moment to think about what we already know and what we want to know about poetry. On the next slide, we are going to look at a chart. This is called a KWL chart. Here, I want you to take a moment to pause the video so you can write down some things for the first column. What do you already know about poetry? Remember, there are no wrong answers and no one is going to judge you based on what you write down. I'll give you a moment to pause here. Awesome. Now we're going to take a moment to fill in the second column. You've already thought about what you already know. Now let's consider what you want to know about poetry. I'll give you time to pause the video again here. Nicely done. Now I can't promise to fulfill all of your wants in this short video, so I do encourage you to explore your own understanding outside of this. In this video, we are going to be focusing on how poetry makes us feel. First, we must ask ourselves, what is poetry? Britannica attempts to define poetry as literature that evokes a concentrated imaginative awareness of experience or a specific emotional response through language chosen and arranged for its meaning, sound, and rhythm. Okay, great, but what does that mean? In basic terms, it means that poetry is a form of literature that uses rhythm and sound to evoke meaning for the reader. Let's look at an example. We're going to watch a video of Sir Patrick Stewart reading a Shakespeare sonnet. As we watch and listen to this, I want you to pay attention to how the sonnet makes you feel, not what the exact literal meaning of it might be. Sonnet one. From fairest creatures we desire increase, that thereby beauty's rose might never die. But as the riper should by time decease, his tender air might bear his memory. But thou, contracted to thine own bright eyes, Feeds thy light's flame with self-substantial fuel, making a famine where abundance lies. Thyself thy foe, to thy sweet self too cruel. Thou, that art now the world's fresh ornament and only herald to the gaudy spring, within thine own bud buriest thy content, and tender churl makes waste in niggardine. Pity the world, or else this glutton be, to eat the world's due by the grave and thee. Tough talk. Now, we're going to break this down a little bit to better help our understanding of how this works. On the left side here, we have the rhythmic breakdown of the first four lines of the sonnet. And on the right side, we have the full sonnet as it is written for a visual comparison. Let's read through the first four lines together using an overemphasis to help us with our understanding. From fairest creatures we desire increase that thereby beauty's rose might never die. But as the writer should by time decrease, his tender air might bear his memory. So, as you can see, the way that a poem is written, or in this case a sonnet, is influenced by the rhythm. The rhythm is what gives us, the reader, an emotional understanding. Shakespeare is not always easy for us to understand as modern day readers, and we are not focused on exact understanding in this video. However, now that you have heard and read sonnet number one, I want you to take out a piece of paper and draw a rough sketch of how you visualize the sonnet. Again, 
There is no wrong way to do this. It is just for you to visualize your understanding of the piece. I will give you time to pause here. Now let's go back to our KWL chart and fill in that final column. What did you learn? We're gonna take a moment, pause the video for the last time today, and you're going to reflect on what you have learned in this lesson. Finally, I want to leave you with a poem that left me with an emotional response. I encourage you to read it on your own time and to read it aloud to see how it feels coming out of your own mouth. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and you're a little bit more excited about poetry.